Well, hello and welcome to another movie review from MBE. Today we're going to be going back to 1996, John, for Dennis Duggan's Happy Gilmore starring Adam Sandler. Yes, yeah, Stephen, the man that everyone seems to love to hate now. Obviously, he's uh, the butt of many jokes. I say he love to hate, they seem to love him now as a dramatic actor. Everyone wanted him to Funny. be nominated for a Best, uh, best Actor at the Oscars. Uh, but this, for some reason, hate upon this guy's comedian, comedy heavy career from the 90s as if it was some shithousery and just full of absolute crap movies. We were speaking about it before we came on. This guy had a run from probably the mid 90s through to the early 2000s. I think just so, yeah. Just hit after hit after hit comedy movies. Little splashes of drama in these comedy movies. Obviously Big Daddy with the, the try to get the, yeah. the kid and stuff like that yeah. and change his ways. So I just, I love Adam, but I do understand he's a Marmite actor, but look Stephen, I digress, we're not really speaking about Adam here, but we are, but we're not yeah. in that sense. No. We're talking about Happy Gilmore <coughs> and what a movie this was, Stephen. I mind the first time I watched this movie, I was just in absolute tears laughing yeah. at it. Just the characters, colourful, zany characters, the tramp as the caddy, things like the, the sock on the, the driver and whatnot, just the... Shooter McGavin, just an amazingly funny movie. Yeah. Some truly epic moments in here, some great cameos, brilliant cinematography at times. Yeah. Just a fantastic movie. Really, I don't know if this was the first one I, I watched of Sanders. It must have been one of the it first. It was the first one I watched. Yeah. yeah. Um, must I, have been. Yeah, I mean, I saw this, I think it was around about 1998. Um, you know, I was probably late to the party on uh, Adam Sandler, but you've got to go back to the time before the internet. You know, here in the UK, we weren't exposed to Saturday Night Live or anything like that, you know. So, um, the, our first sort of um, introduction to this guy was through his films. Um, you know, we've got the internet now, we can go back and watch all these earlier performances, stand-up, etc., with the likes yeah. of Chris Farley, you know, comedy gold in my book. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, <laughs> listen, cool. Adam Sandler is grew up. You know, it's you know, you're talking, this film's, what, 24 years old now, you know, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, no. you know, but I do understand some people's um, tastes may not, it may not match his type of humour, you know, I, I, I don't think he's a Marmite comedian or actor or anything like that, I just think, you know, you either get his humour or you don't, yeah. it's as simple as that. I was 20 when this film came out, so I was 22 when I first saw this film. I came in from the pub, John, on a Friday night, out with the, the lads, a few beverages, came in and put on Sky Movies, and Happy Gilmore was playing. Um, not a big golf fan or anything like that, but something about this film and something about Adam Sandler just clicked with me, yeah. pardon the pun. Um, and, you know, ever since, you're right, you know, I went back and I saw Billy Madison, saw Bulletproof as well, which was a more of a sort of comedy drama yeah. with uh, Damien Wayans excellent film The Waterboy good Fantastic, film love it. Big Daddy great film you know Steve Little Nicky you know it just keeps going on um, but there was a point you know I think probably maybe after Anger Management um, his films started to well for me anyway they weren't as funny as they used to be. I don't know if it was maybe me growing up. I don't it know. It could be, yeah. You know, but um, but saying that, I still go back to Happy Gilmore. I still go back to Billy Madison just for the silliness. You know, I still got a kick out of these films. Um, but you know, he's in a he's a, he's a period of his life now. Um, I don't know how old Adam Sandler is now. He's I would say Mid maybe 40s. well, I, I think he's he's older than me anyway. You know, so I would say early fifties yeah. at oh, most, yeah. maybe mid fifties. Yeah, I'll check it. But um, you know, he doesn't have to do what he used yeah, to yes, do, right. you know, um, when you look it's at crazy. films like Uncut Gems, you know, he's he's matured as an actor, and you're right, there was always those bits of drama, um, maybe not in Happy Gilmore or Billy Madison, but the likes of with The Waterboy, uh, Big Daddy, you know, he always has to put these sort of dramatic sort of, there's always the, the comedy element in it, but I think that was him just sort of, um, you know, um, sort of... Working his acting chops, you know, try to. Stephen, you know, I mean, watching a, a sort of dual interview <clears throat> with him and Brad Pitt. Yeah. And Brad oh, Pitt asked that, yeah. him about that, and yeah. he says, and actually started as a drama actor. He went to a highfalutin drama school. Yeah. Perhaps in New York, I can't recall where. But he started his career or his stint as an actor at a drama school, so he'd never really seen himself as maybe an out and out. <clears throat> Comedian or comedy actor. Funny that. Well, I think they all do. It, to be fair, I think even yeah. Jim Carrey probably. He was the master of stupid faces and just stand up and whatnot. But 
you've seen him develop into a really fine drama actor, so they've all got that in them. You know, to be a good com- sort of comedy actor, you have to have a degree of... Tragedy. Yeah, tragedy yeah. within you. Yeah. All the clowns are really the <clears throat> deepest thinking and yeah. maybe the most dysfunctional individuals. Look at Robin Williams. So it's certainly not a surprise to me that Adam has been on to do drama, but look, Stephen... The, the 90s movies for me I mean they're just absolutely incredible and this is probably one of the best of the lot yeah as I did say it, but it does start off uh, really beautifully fleshing out this you speak about dysfunctional dysfunctional guy Happy Gilmore he's just got his eyes on being a hockey star he wants to yeah. be a hockey star he's clearly not got the ability he on doesn't the ice. make the tryouts does he no he's not got the ability on the ice that's why he's got a good shot He's got a lousy temper. He's got a lousy temper, which should be a bad thing in hockey, but (laughs) just his lack of all-round ability and maybe an over He can't skate as well, that's another issue, you know. (laughs) He can't skate, you're not going to be a hockey player. What are you doing? (laughs) He's got an over-inflated sense of what his ability is, and also that's having a bad effect on his relationships around about him. His partner at the time, or girlfriend or whatever, leaves him. And we get a great scene right off the bat. Also, he goes to the hockey tryouts and fails again, gets rejected. Yep. She's had enough of him as well. His obsession with being a hockey player and thinks she just leaves him. He's at the intercom. Yeah. Screaming at her. closes in. <laughs> yes. Again, it's just him singing. The guy can sing. He's a great singer. Yeah. We've seen that in the, the wedding singing, I want to say it was. Yeah. So yeah. he can sing, but not in that scene. But again, we have mm. great little splashes of maybe drama in there, but then it's over. Maybe, I, I don't know what the word is, but it's over. Eclipsed by the, the comedy in that scene. Stephen, what was your thoughts on this character the first time you've seen? He's a bum. Yeah, happy it's, Gilmore, it's yeah. Simple as that, you know. He's just a it just drifts through life. Yeah. Doesn't really have, carefree, you know. Um, he can't see his own faults. You know, he can't see that he's got this quick temper. He can't see that he's a bad he's a bad skater. You know, and he beats up the the, the coach yeah. at the trials. <laughs> so never, this guy's fairly you know, in this movie. I didn't even realise yeah, he was that old. He's fairly, but he's got that kind of young nature about him, John. Yeah. You know, he's it's very an, an immature he nature. Looks you know, um, but so funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, this is just setting up. How are we going to get this guy, this nutcase of a guy who's so you know passionate about hockey, into a film about golf? Well, this is a setup. You know, um, make him grow up. His grandmother. Um, loses her house uh, through the IRS, yes. you know, and basically she's got to get into a nursing home, which we'll, we'll get into some of the best stuff in there. Yeah. And he has got to work out a way of making money for her. He doesn't know it's a lot of money, tens of thousands of pounds. And, it, um, you know, the what would what, what you call those people that uh, come in and they take yeah, all the your movies. furniture away? Yeah. You know, I can't remember what their name is. But uh, they, they're coming in to take all our possessions off our, you know, furniture and stuff like that. And a couple of furniture removers. Bailiffs. Bailiffs, that's it. Um, are having a break and they're hitting a ball around with, uh, you know, a couple of golf clubs. And basically, there's a bit of a bet, see who can hit the ball further. Yeah, happy to get in and see the hockey. Happy to say. He actually hits a ball right down the street and hits a window, then it hits a person, then hits another person right out the window and they fall off the, the balcony. It's a very funny shot, but you're seeing early on his abilities, um, how he can hit a ball hard. Well, you did see yeah. how he could hit the puck hard. He smashed the glass, sure, yeah. at the tryouts. But um, it, he won the bet, you know, and that handling over money set something off in his head. Oh, I can make money out of this. And then he goes to, I think it's like a golf range, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, driving um, range, yeah. And he's wanting a, you know, I can put the ball past here, you know, place your bets. And he's making pennies, basically. And obviously, when he's doing this, um, Chubbs Peterson, who was a, an ex-pro years ago, played by Carl Weathers, the great yeah. Carl Weathers. Carl. Carl. Um, Carl. I've got to put an accent on him. Carl. Say that because it Carl just comes Weathers. out like Carl, you know, our Scottish accents. But he just thinks, this guy's got something in him, yeah. you know. Yeah, if I can maybe... You know, shape him into some kind of uh, you know semi decent player. He can maybe something I can work with, you know. Um, and that's how it all kicks off, John. Um, but yeah. obviously, before he does all that, um, he's he's obviously got to look after his grandmother. He's got to take her to the nursing home. <laughs> first time I saw Ben Stiller as well. I think this was the first thing I saw him in as well. And he's fantastic. And isn't it? A lot ever. of people do forget that he's in this film <laughs> I did. Um, because he's got that big moustache. Do you know how he's uh, like? Do you remember the bass player that was in the darkness? Yes. Do you remember him? Yes. I think he was Scottish, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. There was one that was dodgy, wasn't there? In the darkness, was that the drummer or the guitarist? He lied about his age. He says he was like 30 and he was 50. Wow. 
and that broke them up. Yeah. Sadly, it didn't. Well, not sadly. What am I talking about? It didn't break this film up. Adam been in it because no. he was. But when I think back, Stephen, I look at the scenes. I've not seen this movie in a long time. I'm, I'm putting my hands up. I'd forgot all about the care home stuff. And you're right. It's fun. Some of the best yeah. stuff in the movie. Mister, Mister. Yes, Mister, Mister. That woman. I think she jumps on the car at one point. And he throws buggers out of her just yeah, in the rings. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be doing Mental. that. They looked no. incredible. Yep. Um, <clears throat> also, he gets. She gets hit with a sort of air conditioning unit as well. Now, see that Mister, Mister woman. I think I've just killed her grandma. <laughs> so the, the interactions, and then yeah. also when he leaves, you've got Sandler's like nursing officer, whatever you'd call him. Yeah. Saying a. Uh, you, I think she requests some hot milk and he says you're yeah. not getting hot milk yeah. you'll be getting, what was it he says uh, can I trouble you for a glass of warm milk now you can yeah. trouble me for some shut the hell up yeah. or something like that I'm paraphrasing I'm, right, the, I'm the same tag. as you John I've yeah. not seen the film in maybe a couple of years but check the name tag now I'm, yeah. I'm in yeah, this is yeah. my domain yeah. you're in my world now <laughs> you're in my world yeah. <laughs> so again it's just you look, a lot of people he's my mate as well Stephen a lot of people oh, I'm hitting the yeah. mic don't yeah. really they can't take to Ben Stiller for some reason I think he's hilarious I love them uh, there's something about Mary and the whole host even Dodgeball there's a lot of things he's he been great in. in extras as well he was yeah. damn good in extras again that's a perfect example where he comes in he plays a sort of what? asshole yeah, figure a work, a work version of himself yeah. Yeah. yeah but also he's playing it he's not scared to have a joke at his own expense yeah. and that's always the sign of a good comic someone that's comfortable within their own skin a really talented guy too so yeah. that cameo in here right off the bat that is just an excellent addition as you did see Coral Wells in there too Carl as the sort of mentoring figure who's obviously going to meet a bitter end at some point and that's going to be the impetus Happy needs to go and do yeah if the, saving his grandmother's family house is not enough then fighting for him is going to be the impetus but Stephen I says that at some point in this guideline we'll probably get into it just now just for the kicks of it because I've actually mentioned it yeah this movie almost cliches a lot of the well deliberately takes the piss out of a lot of these classic sports movies as you did say, uh, there was one you mentioned. Karate Kid, yeah. Karate Kid, yeah. you've got the, the likes of, Ra- uh, not Rambo, Rocky, <laughs> Stone, but not that one. But it takes the piss out of the sort of mentor figure and just the classic tropes and cliches that are in these movies, but it adds a degree of comedic flair. And there's just something about this movie, it's just classic Sandler, this is what he does, he takes these little cliches and genres and puts a twist on it. What was your thoughts on the story? And just because we were speaking about it before we came on, you we were obviously watching highlights of this movie. Yeah. And obviously the disdain <clears throat> McGavin, which we'll get into at some point, has for Sandler's Gilmore character coming in and changing things. And that says right away, being a big Tiger Woods fan, he's clearly been watching what was happening in the golfing world in real life with Woods coming in and changing the th- sport and bringing a lot of loud yeah. mouse and That's different fans in and polluting that and this is something that would have been in golf in the well, 90s with John, Woods. I, I don't think it's went away or anything no. like that you know I, you know me I'm not a big golf fan or anything like that but it's more about the elitism of the of the sport there's a few sports that I don't like because of that kind of snobbery you know and and you're right I think round about that time the, it was probably at its high you know um, yeah you're just and, coming onto the scene and Woods. you know McGavin you know played by you know the great Christopher McDonald um, is just sort of um, representing that sort of um, old school old school yeah. person you know um, those people conservative golfing yeah, circles yeah certainly you know, in America and, and they don't like change they don't like um, outsiders you know no. it's it's all about um, status and you know um, elitism and stuff like that you know and that's the way he views golf that's the way he views the I think it's a gold jacket in this it's not the it's not it's the not green the, jacket yeah, yeah so it's all you know that's Emerald obviously a, a, a piss takeover it looks like one of the green jackets actually turned inside out and you're looking at the, the, the lining inside I think it is gold lining in yeah. the Masters so jacket I think that's so probably what it is it's from, yeah and I think there's a line isn't there from Gilmore yeah, green I mean, jacket gold jacket uh, who gives a shit yeah as I, yeah, as I said you know um, you know, I, there's something about this film that just sort of drew me in. It just, co- it just caught me right away. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know who Adam Sandler was. Didn't know much of the cast, maybe apart from Carl Weathers. Um, and I didn't like golf, so I'm like, why am I watching this film? But there's just something about it because I think there is maybe a joke every. 15 20 seconds in this film, yeah. It might be an observation, it might just be a little line, it might, might be just a look that Adam Sandler's pulling, or you know, Christopher McDonald. There's just something about this, it's just the chemistry in this film just draws you in, absolutely. Stephen, and obviously, as you say, as he goes through the driving range, he does meet Chubbs. 
I think they meet once he's in the actual batting practice <laughs> yeah. baseball machine. Yeah. He's taking poundings. He's saying, what the hell are you doing, kid? Right, I'm 364 days away from my next hockey practice. I have to toughen up. He's taking baseball <laughs> yeah. bats to the head. That one was a little sore, but I'll take it. And this is the start of this relationship between these two distinctly different characters. It's almost like a father figure. He's a dysfunctional guy. He's like a man-child, much like we've seen in Billy yeah. Madison back to school and things like that. He's having to grow some or show some responsibility in a hard time, save his family or his grandmother's home. And this guy's the perfect sort of foil for him at this point. He comes in, he, as you did say, recognises the aura, the talent he has, yeah. or just the raw ability to yeah, drive a ball. Yeah. And he brings him in, he tries to convince him, look, you can earn the money you need. I'm paraphrasing heavily here, as I said, I've not seen it in a long time, but he convinces him to go to this sort of qualifying tournament. And if he wins the tournament, he gets a slot yeah. on the professional circuit, the tour. Yeah. And this is when the first time we start seeing him get in and playing golf. And he's air shotting the drives and whatnot. He's taking about three, four hits, and he's getting really angry and like swinging. He's got that distinct style as well. He holds it like a hockey stick. Yeah, he holds it quite well. Run yeah. takes a run and swings. Yeah. I can completely get on board with that. Having played golf many times and missed the ball more times than I've hit it, I'm definitely a happy Gilmore. Yeah, without I think, the power. I think the pressure of the people waiting for you to oh, yeah, finish sure. your hole as well is is <laughs> Steve, obviously I've got a great story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's share it. You know, share I've it. Got a great story. We went, me, yeah. my father, and my, my neighbour at the time. Yeah, neighbour went first and hit the ball three four hundred yards. I went next, hit the ball three hundred yards. My dad was absolutely shitting himself, went next. I thought it was going to be like Happy Gilmore, but he hit it first time. Oh. That was the only time we <laughs> hit the ball. Must have been the adrenaline, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just because it was people up there. But there is a, there's a, there's obviously a pressure, you know, and um, I, I think that this film highlights it in those early stages for Happy, you know. As, as well as he can hit a ball, you know, and, and we see that, you know, I think he gets a hole-in-one in this qualifying mm-hmm. tournament. Um, he watching. just doesn't know how to putt, you know. He's no. not had any practice, you know. He doesn't, and he shouldn't, you know. You don't do that in hockey, so you know. It's all about dribbling and it's all about hitting the ball, uh, the puck oh. as hard as you can. So, um, there's a few comments in there. They, they're like, "What's this guy doing here?" You Finally. know, f- you know something about um, Adam Sandler's facial expressions as well as he keeps under hitting the ball or over hitting the ball. He just, you can see the rage building up in him. <laughs> You know, we've all did that, haven't we? We've oh, yeah. all, you know, it doesn't have to be golf, but, you know, just want to do something, we want to do it first time, and it infuriates you, you know, you're annoyed with yourself, but there's people making comments, you know, is this guy for real, you know? Laughing. You know, and laughing and stuff, like he actually takes one of them out, we watched that clip. That's hilarious. Yeah, I think yeah. he says finally or something, yeah, yeah finally, yeah, I fine. wanted to put yeah. the ball in the hole, but I just couldn't, <laughs> rips his top over and punches him right in the, the jaw, fantastic. I think at this point, Chubbs, I'm not sure if it is. Just now, I presume it is, because he's still trying to teach him and impart some wisdom. He's saying, it's all on the hips, he's behind him. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. all on the hips, it's yeah. all on the hips. Why, why don't you get off me and do it with someone else or something along those lines? Yeah. It's all on the... He's that joke. tension or something. Yeah, like he's that, that tension. Yeah, yeah, he's the tension, he's the tension. He's the tension somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. He's the tension somewhere else. Yeah. Great chemistry between these two guys, there right is, off yeah. the bat. And it's something that sets the tone for the whole movie, because this guy's trying to impart wisdom onto him yeah. about this sport. I've seen it with snooker as well. It's an individual sport. It's all on you. If you go mentally and you are impulsive and angry all the time, you will lose your shit and crumble. Yeah. And this is not the great kind of sport for Happy Gilmore at this stage, but he does start to mature at some point and then goes back and then matures again and then goes back. But it's uh, just even, what was your thoughts on the arrival of Shooter McGavin? No, I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole. No. Because around about this point, he does. He, oh, as you did see, he's got a hatred for the lack of class this guy's yeah. bringing. He's all about the But he's old not a nice school. person. No. I, I, you know, the way that he, he's speaking... Try to put on a smile. Yeah, I mean, the, the way he's speaking face. to... Um, I, I can't remember her name, um, the, the the character's name, the, the sort of hey, PR. Virginia Venet. Virginia, you know, she's um, basically, um, you know, he's, he's saying, hey, go and get us a coat and stuff like that, you know. Um, he just treats people like crap, you know. It's all about... Um, image for this guy, you know, it's all about climbing that social ladder, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, you're trampling anyone to get there, you know, so he's not a very nice person, it's not just happy, you know, I think that's just the sort of tip off the iceberg, but I think um, he's just a, he's quite a, an unhappy person, but in a, obviously in a funny way, because Christopher McDonald's such a funny guy, yeah. you know, and he's, this character, I love Shooter McGavin, just yeah. for these anger issues, um, the, some of the lines, you know, uh, eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. You eat, eat pieces. pieces of shit for breakfast, you know, that kind of thing. Um, just, no, you know, 
and then he, he walks away. It's he can't, the drawing he a, a, a superior intellectual person into the argument, bringing the. So I'm not. I'm saying Adam Sandler's that. I'm saying the actual character. Yeah. He's got that way of drawing people in. Yeah. It makes them angry. He can draw them down into a childish <laughs> fight. This guy thinks he's above him, but even then he has to reply because he makes them look like a fool. Yeah. Yes, Stephen. He's an absolutely fantastic, comedic antagonist. There's just something about him. Just a little mannerisms again. A little pal pal in the when blowing it. And, spinning it and putting it in and pointing at yourself yeah. just something about the antics between these two I mean he's hiring out like jeers and whatnot. people from the crowd to put him off and getting people to run him over and all the rest of it he's a these people go back to your shanties <laughs> <laughs> there's something about the performance yeah. from McDonald. he's absolutely fantastic for me he's the actual standout but we'll get into that at some yeah. point we're all over the place here with this guideline yeah. incidentally it doesn't even matter screw it he is one of the best things in this movie. Yeah, we're, we're almost at the end of the qualifier, John. Yes, obviously, yeah, well, obviously he qualifies. I mean, shock horror. You have to continue the plot on. Yeah. And then, obviously, his popularity's booming. His behaviour's starting to come under control. I think prior to that, we had McGavin working in cahoots with the tour manager. It's Dugan or something, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's the director. Yeah, the yeah. director, yeah. yeah, it plays him. And he's trying to get him thrown off. And I think it's Virginia says, no, I'll vouch for him, I'll hone this guy he's got something about him he can bring something to the sport Yeah, I'll get him under control so she starts also there's a relationship between them as well that's on off in this yeah, she's movie she's the PR officer so yeah. she sees a you know, she sees the potential in him you know as a, yeah. as a, for a PR stunt you know this actually could promote this tour yeah. you know with this guy promote him as well but obviously you know she doesn't really know him but she knows that there's potential there to perhaps you know um, introduce a younger audience to the game yeah. You know, that's the way she's looking at it, you know. Yeah, and that's what you would get in real life, the likes yeah. of Woods and whatnot coming yeah. in, that, that blowback from the Conservative side. As I did see his popularity booms, he goes and gets the tramp from the car park, brings it, he needs a caddy, he brings yeah. him in. I think he's got like four clubs at one point and he's putting a sock on, a ma- mangy old yeah, it's, sock. Um, it's Alan Covert, um, <laughs> who <laughs> he appears that's in so amazing. many of uh, Adam Sandler's film he's the limo driver and the wedding singer as you know but he's in so many films he's he, he's one of the friends in Big Daddy one of the gay friends yeah. as well <laughs> yeah, but that's right, yeah. he's, you know th- there's something about Adam Sandler and the way he treats Alan Covert in these films you know as, as good a friends they are Adam Sandler's a bit like Ricky Gervais yeah, with, with Pilkington with Pilkington yeah. he likes to taunt this guy you know make his life a misery you know but not obviously being a nasty person or anything like that but I think Adam Sandler just likes to put Alan Covert in some very awkward situations at times you know and see how he plays off it because he knows that he can you know yeah. he's, he's got that comedic ability about him you know and this one don't think he's even got a line no he doesn't you know? no he doesn't open his mouth but there's yeah. something about him Stephen the looks he's memorable, shaggy yeah. yeah yeah just a complete tramp <laughs> he works well <laughs> in the background. He does that. He's got that way about him with characters yeah. as well. We've seen it with the likes of Steve, Steve Buscemi and a Big Daddy and whatnot, yeah. slipping the Big Mac out in the, the court and whatnot. He makes these really good actors <laughs> do the most ridiculous things, but he gets the performances out of them. That's why I cannot understand people doing down on these movies because there's some great actors in here and there's some yeah. really great yeah. moments throughout these movies. But obviously, Stephen, he does get... <laughs> we'll get into the, the subway endorsement in a moment. I was about to jump ahead. <laughs> yeah. We cannot miss the moment where he... We think he's got it all together. And then he gets put into this sort of pro-am tournament with some old chat show hoster. Bob Barker, yeah. yeah. Bob the Barker. Price is Right, yeah. Yeah, The yeah. Price is Right. And he's playing with him. Also, McGavin's <clears> in the background, like a puppet master. He's hired this guy. It's the guy from... It's the Joe, end of Joe yeah. Flarty. Yeah, Joe Flarty, the Flarty, end of yeah. uh, Back to the Future 2. Yeah, he's yeah. the jeerer, yeah. and he's just annoying him. He's shouting at him, trying to get under his skin. He's partnering with this Price is Right guy. And then they start bickering. He's like, I'd love to punch him, but I know I can't. And he has to keep it under wraps. Eventually, he breaks, he snaps, but he snaps with the actual old guy, the partner. Yeah. And we get one of the best fight sequences in a yeah. comedy movie I think ever. They're just amazing. It's, it's over the top. Yeah, it's over the top. Knees to the John. face and kicking Price is him. Right, bitch. Price yeah. is right, bitch. The you price know. is wrong, bitch. Yeah, price is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> just, um, it is, it's, it's hilarious, you know. Um, I don't know what age Bob Barker was at the time, but there's something about that sequence that just makes me laugh so much. I don't know if it's because of... Um, Jesus you Christ, know, he's still alive. 
I don't I don't know if it's just the way they fight, you know, um, but some of the patter between both of them as well is really, really funny. Yeah, I mean, I think he's punching him in the stomach at one point and then he kicks <laughs> him in the head. Uh, no, you want some more? Well, no, you're done now, uh, bitch. It's just incredible. It's just <laughs> yeah. ridiculous, this old guy kicking the shit out of him, giving him a bit back. It just shows you there's that edge to other characters. He's not the only nasty street in the movie. Also, that does get him tossed off the tour. He gets suspended. Virginia, not really giving up, though. She says, no. look, there's still an opportunity. Get some of this subway endorsement. We get that ridiculous advert where he's uh, <laughs> talk about a whole in one and he's yeah, getting sub. Yeah. Just incredible. That brings him back in, he gets some money from that, he would think he wants to go and buy the house at this point. Shooter, being the shit that he is, goes in, outbids him. It's put up for auction, isn't yeah, it? Put yeah, put up for auction. Yeah. He wants to buy the house, so obviously happy. Shooter outbids him, buys the house and says, look, I'll give you the house if you give up golf. He's ready to do it and then I think Virginia says, no, 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 stick at it, you've got something there, you can make this game better. And he decides, look, look we'll go for a, a shootout. If I win the Tour Championship, then I get the house. If you win, then I quit golf. It's a terrible sort of setup, incidentally. He quits golf. He's only doing it for... Yeah, I mean, what? He's he's not getting much to lose, has he? Well, he has. He's got the house, obviously. He wants to, you know, win free. And then he gets to quit a sport he really hates. But there's not so so much in it for Shirt McGavin, other than getting this guy out of his hair. You know, it's that bad, isn't it? You know, he just can't handle this guy. Um, Mr. Larson's in this as well now he was actually introduced at the very start of the film I think it was like home video sort of montage yeah. where um, one of the jobs that um, Happy Gilmore was on was in a building site shooting a nail gun and he uh, accidentally shot his, his obviously site officer our manager, um, you know, in the back of the head. It's, um, obviously, I can't remember the guy's name, um, playing Mr. Larson. He's Jaws from, is it um, Richard Keel, I think his name is? Uh, I'll find it just now, Stephen. Uh, it is, it's Richard Keel. Yeah. And he's um, he's come in at a time, you know, um, to support Happy. He's forgave and forget, you know, he's just, basically, he's like, you know, I'm here for you now, Happy. I'm one of your biggest fans, you know. And for some reason, you know, has this altercation with, with Shooter McGavin, which is at some of the best comedy you'll see just from Christopher McDonald you know just um, I think he turns round in the middle of slagging this guy you know, yeah. and, and Richard Keel's <laughs> such a tall fella you know I think at this point he's actually stooping over a bit more because he's he's obviously older at this point in his life Gigantic. but he's still huge you know Christopher McDonald's not a small guy either but he just turns round and the absolute fear in him just with the stature <laughs> of this guy was hilarious it is Stephen there's a great line at the end of, round about the end of the movie I think you make some disparaging comment to him and he, you, Frankenstein's you, foot yeah yeah no but you actually know i Take you to the car park and kick you out. Yeah, you know, I, along I, I, do you know something? I'd have to read it, John. I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't it's be able to paraphrase that one. It's a fantastic quote. You're right. Yeah. There's some great. Back you can count on me. Yeah, taking you to the car park yeah, after yeah. this and beating the show. <laughs> you're something. But he does. Well, he chases him, doesn't he? He, gets <laughs> oh, yes. the, he gets the rips the jacket off him. Yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> he's front of the queue. Yeah, uh, at the end of a movie. Stephen, obviously, this does take us to the mini golf sequence because they're building up to this tour championship. He's, He's tried to obviously train him and putting, yeah, so take him, him to the crazy golf, which is actually it's quite clever actually when you think about it because there's a bit of a technique to yeah. crazy golf. Yeah, it's all putting, it's all think, hips. But not until he comes up against the yeah, clown. Yeah, he's doing well and then he comes up against this clown that's just <laughs> taking him for a mug and it's laughing in his face and we get to see that... I hate that clown! <laughs> yeah, he keeps missing <laughs> and it finally gets under his skin. <laughs> You're going to die, clown! And he's getting the absolute shit out of it with the, yeah, the club, putter. Yeah. yeah, the putter. It's just a great scene, it yeah. really is, but what comes afterwards is perhaps even better. I mean, I don't know if you're supposed to laugh at job dying but I laughed at it yeah, yeah. he also takes the alligator it's after yeah, the minute he, golf. It, he yeah. goes back to his flat I think I've got a present for you he's shown his appreciation for him working yeah. with him showing faith in him and he opens up the box and it's the alligator head that took of the alligator that took his hand yeah. he gets a fright and falls back out of the window <laughs> And then I think, yeah, I think he doesn't get hit with a car, I'm pretty sure he doesn't, but he dies. Do you know the and funny then, thing is, John, right after, obviously, you know, there must be time after it, you know. Yeah. 
you know, Shooter's actually going to dedicate his win to Shooter. <laughs> it's just, just the nastiness of the guy because he knows that that sport happy with what he do, you know. Um, you know, congratulations on murdering a golf legend or something. Yeah. I can't remember the line, John. Was, but he's such a that. horrible person, isn't he? Yeah, it's just, but he's fantastic, Steve. Yeah. And again, it's just everything in this movie is riddled with humour. Even the dark points are just riddled with humour. Him, why did he think that would be a good idea? Showing a severed alligator head to him. The alligator that ripped his hand off. thing is, John, the alligator <laughs> and Chubbs and, and um, Abraham Lincoln at the very <laughs> yeah, end. Thinking, you know, yeah. as ghost in ghost form, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's even. His movies are steeped with serialism like that. I yeah. always vividly remember the end of Waterboy when he does the winning uh, touchdown and you've got the sort of coach twirling the nipple rings or, slow motion yes. there's so many moments like or, that or the penguin and Billy Madison yeah, the pe- you know, when he's drunk you know as he's his sort of imaginary friend yeah there's so many moments yeah. like that in these movies and that is one of them <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely the Abraham Lincoln why makes no sense but obviously this gives him as I did say earlier it's sort of parodying the cliched sports scene or oh, sports scene that's like <laughs> oh, no. that's like a TV show yeah. for you I've been watching too many classic games clearly <laughs> parodying class- all of the classic sports movie moments <clears throat> and that gives him the impetus now he's lost his mentor his friend although he didn't know him that long I presume it gives him the impetus to go and win this tournament he's doing it for his grandmother and he's doing it for Chubbs as well but obviously in between us Stephen we're getting to see that things are deteriorating for the grandmother she's in this home yeah. Ben Stiller's character's giving her absolute shit her finger that one of her friends her th- my finger's hurting yeah. well your finger's hurting well soon your back's going to be hurting because you've just bought yourself a landscaping duty yeah it's landscaping yeah. duty so there's so many moments <laughs> where you're flitting back between the care home you realise that look it's not good no. for her he has to act and get this money together soon it's, it's not going to end well for her so again, the pressure's on him, he has to mature, he has to try and get to this golf tournament and win it. And you see that at the actual start of the tournament, he's, he's off to a really good start, he's inspired, he's in the lead, yeah, I think it's three, four shots in the lead, everything's going well for him, the music, it's like the, what the hell is that called, that goddamn Gary Gutter song? Yeah, rock and roll, yeah. I don't want to admit I know what, music, because yeah. he's an absolute weirdo, that yeah, guy, but yeah. yeah, it's a great song, we obviously is, yeah. got you it in Joker And the House of Pain as well, John's Jump Around, so, yeah. which you've was some truly one of the songs, songs of the 1990s, but you're absolutely right, you know, it's that leaderboard that you keep seeing, you know, he's yeah. climbing it, he's going to drop him a couple then he's climbing up again you know and then obviously as you said you know he has the injury with that mad fan that obviously Shooter pays off to try and um, injure think, him in some yeah. way you know which I think he does I think he knocks him down in a beetle or something like yeah, that he does, yeah. and he kind of loses a bit of the form he's he lost drive. obviously Chubbs you know and uh, it, it, things seem like they're falling apart you're absolutely right John you know and he's got to pull himself together I think Virginia has something to do with that as yeah. well where she says you know You've, you've got to try and do this for yourself, you know. You know your your grandmother will always be okay, you know. Um, Chubbs was very proud of you, etc., etc. It's that sort of dramatic sort of period of the film, yeah. Um, you know, and then just you know focus and, and just win this goddamn game, you know. Which the the climatic sort of um, you know final sort of round of golf, if you like, to to win this tournament is it's just so good, you know. Um, McGavin holding it, yeah. silence, bang bang, and yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. The back and forth between the two characters, you see the hatred that they have for each other. None of them are willing to give up. They just want to win this tournament at all costs. And obviously that does lead... I think it's actually the Psycho fan drives the Beetle in. Uh, it hits, Ju- one, yeah, of it hits one of the uh, tails. Like the, yeah. yeah, the camera yeah. things. And it's sitting there and I think Happy drives the ball in the final hole and it lands in the midst of this master, this scaffolding. Yeah, it's almost like crazy golf again. Yeah, it's crazy it? golf. Got it. Yeah, it brings it back. And this is where yeah. the final moments with Chubbs teaching them how to put in the crazy golf course, it all blends in beautifully. It's all poetic. <laughs> he hits a shot in a million. No one thinks he's going to do it. It slows down time itself. It's going round and hitting yeah. off. Yeah, you see all the crowd going like this. Yeah. <laughs> big, uh, the big tall guy as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then also, he makes the hole, or the, he makes the putt, for yeah. lack of a better term. Yeah. That is the term. Yeah. And he saved, that's him, he's won, he saved the, the day's house, the grandmother's house is his and whatnot. And he's won that good jacket as well. He's won the jacket, but, but Shooter is not having it. No, no, he grabs the jacket and runs. And you get everyone chasing him. You know, Richard Keel's right at the front. You know, for such a guy, you could see he's obviously struggling to move, but he's right down the front because he's made a promise. I, I told you I was going to get you. <laughs> And obviously, I think he does get him, you know, and I think a big crowd of people are, you know, kicking yeah, the shit out of him, you know, because him, yeah. you can hear all the noises, all the screams and stuff like that. 
But yeah, John, it's a, it's just a great finish to the film. But um, the the comedy throughout of this movie never dips. No. You know, it maintains a you know a very good level, a good quality level of comedy. As I said, you know, it's maybe every twenty seconds you're getting a funny line in there, yeah. a funny look, or a, just a some kind of funny scenario in there. Even as you said in the darker moments of the film, you know, you can't help but laugh. Steve, that's down to the writing. I mean, it is. Adam yeah. Sandler wrote it with Tim Herrley, I want to say his name is. Yeah. They've worked in cahoots with, uh, cahoots, I keep saying cahoots, collaborated Collaborate, many, yeah. many times yeah. over many movies. Some did really bad effects and pixels and whatnot. And these early movies, really, really good effect. Steve, as you did say, the Jack soundtrack. And Joe. Was, yeah. <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> But obviously the score... Don Cacino. <laughs> <laughs> but that was... That, Stephen, I didn't know that existed until you actually showed me. I have to go and watch that now. What's man now? Don Cacino. Burn it. Burn every copy. It's like George Lucas with yeah. the holiday special. <laughs> yeah. The composer, though, I mean, he's worked in the likes of Thor Ragnarok, the Lego movie. I mean, right, I didn't know done, that. done a whole yeah. lot of really like, Watchmen. That was a great movie from. Well, it actually wasn't that Watchmen, it was the TV the show. Television series. It's supposed to be yeah. fantastic yeah. as well, though. So, a really good composer, he managed to get in on what, that. What was his name, John? Uh, the name was, I will tell you the name right now if I can find it. I'm yeah. struggling around. It on the spot. Mark Mothersbaugh. Right, okay. It was his name, yeah. And then obviously the cinematographer, I'm talking about technical stuff here of course, you know, try to fill this review out a little bit. Arthur Albert, he has worked on a array of very cool things as well. TV, the likes of Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, really, really yeah, good yeah. cinematographer. So technically you've seen it with the ball flying I like that across. Stuff, yeah. There's some really cool shots, the heads turning as you did say, back and forth. John, there's it's, a technique, you know, as much as, you know, um, we commend writers of good comedy films, Cinematography is just as important in comedy films. You've got yeah. to capture that moment Absolutely. very quickly, you know. Especially if there's maybe a breaking a fourth wall moment or something like that. You've got to, you know, envisage that, you know, that and you've got to make sure that the timing of that's right as well. You know, and sometimes you get a good lingering shot as well. An awkward moment or something like that. It's just so funny. Yeah, absolutely. And that's all down to cinematographer. It really is, Stephen. But look, final thing I'll add, man. I mean, final thoughts in this movie. What can you say? It's probably... I don't know if I'd say it's my favourite Adam Sandler comedy movie. I've still got a sweet spot for Billy Madison. Yeah. And the likes of... Well, I'm not going to put Mr Deeds above this. It's probably a second. A close second for me in the all-time listings of Adam Sandler movies. I don't know why I'm saying... Billy Madison's above it I and mean, I didn't actually review Billy Madison we decided to review Happy Gilmore we might John I mean, yeah we will at some point I'm yeah. sure but it's an absolutely iconic 90s comedy movie yeah. it's right up there it's one of the best written comedy movies of all time for me it's just him it just epitomises where Adam Sandler was at this moment again 30 years old yeah. I cannot believe he was 30 I thought he was younger Yeah, it, it, but it's right up there for me one of yeah, my all time favourite comedies he kind of um, for me anyway you know a lot of people might disagree with this but he kind of mirrors the way Eddie Murphy's sort of career and film yeah. went, you know, that very sort of raw, sort of edgy um, humour, you know, at a very young age, not young, 30's not young, but it's young enough, you know, um, it's just not got the life experience yet. Um, but, you know, as time goes on, it, you don't want to see a 50 odd year old man try to do Happy Gilmore, no. you know. Or Billy Madison, it's ridiculous and it would look pathetic, you know. He's moved on. I think he's trying to look Ringo again there, Stephen. I know, he's moved I on. I think I'm actually morphing into Ringo. I'm getting a bit worried, John. You know, our friend, <laughs> our friend but, is gone. But yes. um, I think um, I think he's chosen the right path. Not always the right movie, but the right path. You know, I think, and I've did I did Sandy Wexler, which I thought was an okay film. You know, but he's did a lot of Duff films over the last 10 years or so. Some really good ones as well, you know, but um, Funny People, I think that was one of them, was a, a really good film, a good um, a humor in it, obviously, but yeah. it was it was drama as well, you know, and I think that's his forte. You're right, I think he's getting back to where it all began for him, you know, what he always intended to be. Um, I don't know, obviously, I, I've never read an Adam Sandler biography or anything like that. I don't know much about his background, I don't know where he came from. I don't know how he started out. I think he's from Other Britain. than Saturday Night Live, you know, that kind of thing. I think that's where the comedy, that's probably why people do relate to him, you know, and they think of Adam Sandler as a comedic actor. And, and probably rightly so, because most of his career has been in that genre. Um, but 
That's not to say that he can't act, you no. know, and he can't do drama. Very much like you did say at the start of this review, Jim Carrey. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure we'll do some reviews on his oh, films absolutely. as well, you know. Yeah. Some of his serious stuff, you know. Steve, um, I've still not seen the number 23 and uh, quite a, the Eternal Sunshine, Sunshine of the Spotless, spotless Mind. Yeah. I need to go and watch those movies because yeah. I love Jim. And you're right, there's something about uh, comedic actors. They do, they go through a sort of golden era. Yeah. We've seen it with Eddie Murphy, you're right. We've seen it with yeah. Jim Carrey. We've seen it with Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase, yeah. They, they seem to, uh, Dan Aykroyd to a lesser extent, and maybe Bill Murray, they, they seem to Steve go through. Martin, yeah. Steve Martin, they get yeah. this stage where they, they're just, they can't do nothing wrong. Everyone loves their movies, and then they hit an absolute slump, and then some disappear completely off the face well, of Steve the earth. Steve Gutenberg, yeah. Yes, yeah, <laughs> he turned up on a news station for some actor or something that died. His wife I killed him. him as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he turned into a white boy. He turned yeah. up at some shooter, a shooting of a, a famous person, and says he knew him. No one knew who the hell he was. So yeah, he went strange. It happens. It, it seems they they have the world at their feet. The world is their oyster, and then they just it disappears, and they have to either change with the times or just disappear completely like Chevy Chase or maybe as you did say Jim Carrey or Adam go down the drama route so it's just that's just where it is I mean everyone evolves life goes yeah. on within you and without you or flows on as yeah. George Harrison says not Ringo I, yeah not Ringo I cannot wait to see where Adam goes after this I've loved his comedy and I can't wait to see where his drama stuff goes if Uncut James is anything to go by then it's going to be a fantastic new face for this guy's career I think I can see him winning an Oscar at some point because he was magnificent in that movie sadly I think it's too late for Eddie because uh, he didn't get the just desserts for that performance in Dolph Mate is my name but look Stephen I ain't got much more to add man I don't know if you've got any final not, thoughts no. to add on this magnificent movie well that's going to round up our thoughts on Happy Elmore what's your thoughts on Adam Sandler his run in the 90s as a comedic actor writer just all hearing all seeing omnipotent master of comedy what's your thoughts on anything regarding this movie if you have anything to say at all you can comment below nearly lost my voice there you can also like the video if you've enjoyed it and you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see us blither away blither away uh, more just I don't know crap about movies we love some perhaps we hate if we get round to it and if you do then you will see us again tomorrow for a review of Dumb and Dumber to the night closes in